Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit. Our guest is John Kamara. John is a serial entrepreneur and founder of AI Center of Excellence Africa. John, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. What would you like to see come out of this summit? Um, first, I'm really excited to be back here after a few years away um, due to the pandemic. But objectively, I would like to see initiatives that will actually help drive growth in emerging markets, especially Africa where I'm from, practical things that we can do and report back by the end of next year with the international AI community back in projects that are very you know, fundamental for the development of all emerging markets, especially Africa. Can you give me some examples? So one of the things are uh, when I was here about a number of years ago, <coughs> we had talked about what will it take for Africa or most countries in Africa to also be part of this AI revolution. And the fundamental thing that we had talked about was education, capacity development, talent. So, and you realize that obviously fast forward now, age of chat GPT and whatnot, without the fundamental education and skill set, we again are back to consumption economy. We're not consuming what everybody else is producing. And which means as a society, as nations, as people, it is extremely difficult if you're not part of the ownership of an IP. And AI, various models of it is uh, IPs. If you don't own any of that IP and you keep consuming, you just keep paying. So you can't really develop your own society or actually find solutions for your society based on the context of where you're from or where you're at. Now, without the skill set to do that, it doesn't matter what it is that we you know, talk about or how many times we talk about all the other things that are important, but without the basic fundamental skill sets in the continent for our young people to be able to actually build AI solutions, have the skills to build models that make sense to solve our own problems, then we are back to the same old adage all over again. So for me, that's, that's the same consistent theme that I've been talking about for four years. We need to build more capacity in Africa and we need to start from early age, we need to start from universities, we need to start from high schools and also we need to also retrain a lot of people to give us the skills that we require to actually access the value of the market. So that, that for me is the practical example of one thing that I want out of this place. The commitment from a lot of the partners that we're talking to that how are you going to help us develop the skill sets we require for us to play at the same table with you. And who's been doing it right then? Um, I mean, y you've got countries like India. I mean, again, one of the things that I was just in the US last week discussing the same issue, and I thought, you know, we have to look at other emerging markets that are very similar to us, what they're doing. India has decided to figure out ways to actually drive its own economy via, you know, talent, fundamental skill sets, and also building, you know, qualitative human capital as against just the quantity of the human capital you have. So the society is quite similar and the responsibility of those societies are very similar. So they are, and they're also now dragging everybody into what they want you to do for them rather than just, you know, what you want for them. So, and I think that's also the thing that we should look at in, in Africa. If you also look at some other Asian countries as well. So uh, our, our practical example is not Europe. Our practical example is all the emerging markets, the way they're doing it. Europe for us would be a support to America, would be support to help us achieve these goals. But I don't think that, you know, most of the African countries are so different that you also have to look at each one of the issues that exist in those countries. I mean, some countries you can't even find 50 AI engineers in the countries. How can AI be used to uh, address specific global issues? I mean, I think, again, I'll, I'm going to bring it home to Africa because that's my, my very sure. core interest. One of the key things that we're seeing, especially with climate change, and when I say climate change, I'm just not, not talking about the change, but I'm talking about also agriculture, I'm talking about healthcare, and I'm talking about biodiversity changes, and I'm talking, so these are fundamental things that are, you know, important for everyday life. Uh, even the blue ocean economy that we're talking about and environmental impacts of changes. So we're seeing a lot of use of data 
and then AI models that are being built, for example, early warning systems to actually help us, you know, predict potential flood crises, to predict, predict potential um, hurricanes and cyclones that are happening, but also drought. We're having so much drought right now. So that's, we, we're seeing a lot of opportunities and we're looking for more projects like that in those spaces. Then you talk about things like agriculture. Again, drought is causing us to have to find, you know, use a lot of models in AI and a lot of data to try to make seeds that are drought resistant. Because again, that is an impactful thing. A farmer can now plant better seeds, even with a drought situation. You know, food security and food productivity obviously means, and then healthcare, again, using, you know, very interesting data sets to start predicting doing preventive healthcare for women, especially in, in rural and sub-rural communities as well. So those are the three areas for me that really excite me about, you know, the value of what AI can do in emerging markets again. So you give all these examples, which is the most exciting one, would you say, at the moment? Um, healthcare. Healthcare really, really excites me a lot because of um, you're saving human lives using you know data and then building ai models on top of it and and I've, i'm seeing so many different use cases that are actually solving problems that would have taken us months and years to solve and that compressing those problems and also bringing a lot of learning opportunities to people in real time so healthcare and agriculture those would be the two places where i, I really see a lot of excitement and how can we ensure that this technology is being developed in a safe and ethical way good question <laughs> Um, I think everyone is concerned about AI ethics, the ethical nature of AI. And across the globe, uh, I, I think it's absolutely paramount and absolutely important that we really look at ethical AI and what people are doing and holding people accountable and you know, creating frameworks that hold people accountable. But also, in the question of ethic, I see like another question, you know, which is around policy that in emerging markets, if we don't play at the table because we can't even develop solutions and we don't have the skill set and a lot of policies are put in place, does that, ne does that hinder our own development as well? So it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting, important issue, but I also think that developing those markets or inclusive AI, which is for me the most important thing, should also be at the forefront as much as we're talking about ethical AI. And, and it shouldn't just be about only social good. There's also commercial good because people who are talking about AI ethics are driving commercial good out of AI. So now we're talking about social good, which is important in social public protection, but they're driving commercial good out of it, and you want to stop other societies from also driving commercial good. So there's, there's got to be a balance in these conversations in ways that says, what are we doing to also support these economies as well, rather than just say, now you have to stop doing this because we feel it's not ethical. John Kamara, thank you so much for your time. More coming up later on the AI for Good Global Summit.